ton of systems in there, guys. A ton of systems. So go ahead and start passing around that sheet. There's a ton of systems in there. Even the cold towels that were being handed out at the end, that's a system. I know it's happening while I'm here. They come right out of the freezer. That's a system. I know that's happening while I'm here. So we all know that we're starting out against the odds, right? It's a small business venture. We're starting out against the odds. According to the SBA, 400,000 small businesses fail per year. According to a recent study by Results Fitness, 16 out of 17 gyms fail per year. So the question that you got to ask yourself is how are you going to beat the odds? So this is what I'd like you guys to do real quick. I'd like you to take 15 seconds, 15 seconds, that's all we need, just 15 seconds, get your pens in your hand. I want you to take 15 seconds and tell me what product it is that your business sells. Ready, set, go. Five seconds in, 10 seconds left. What does your business sell? Three, two, one, and done. All right. Now, before we answer that, before we answer that, okay, you got your answers on your paper. What product, what product is it that McDonald's sells? Somebody answer. Hammers. Hammers. Thanks for being the first one to answer, Duncan. Here's a shirt. All right. Anybody else? Have it your way. Have it your way. That's an answer. There you go. Smiles. Smiles. That's an answer. Oh, smiles. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, three answers. Thank you guys for answering. Now, anybody else? As far as what does your business sell? What does your business sell? Fitness. Fitness. Okay. Passion. Customer service. Experience. Motivation. These are. These are all good answers. These are all good answers. And I'm going to show you how our business and McDonald's are connected right now. You know, the popular answer for what McDonald's sells was hamburgers, right? Who in here can make a better burger than McDonald's? I can't. I don't even do the cooking in my house. I can make a better burger than McDonald's. OK, so why is it then that McDonald's is selling burgers in 5,000 places and doing it when we can make it better? I'll tell you what my business sells. At Journey Fitness, we sell rapid weight loss through group personal training and nutritional counseling, where every trainer knows your name, any limitations that you have, and the goal that you're working on at all times. What McDonald's sells is their business. They sell uh, all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun in 90 seconds or less, right? So you don't come there for the best burger. You come there for a burger in 90 seconds or less. And that's a system. So they buy the business. Richard Branson, we all know Richard Branson, right? Raise your hand if you know Richard Branson. Okay, founder of Virgin, great entrepreneur. He says, the best time to get into a new business is when it's being poorly run by other people. Excluding the people in this room, can we all admit that fitness has been largely uh, run poorly for a number of years, right? People have been coming in for a number of years and we've been selling memberships on the pay and go away plan, right? I mean, that's what big box gyms do. I want results, I want motivation, I want accountability. Okay, great, here's a membership. Uh, don't know your name, don't know anything about you. I know you won't be coming in two weeks. Thanks for signing up, right? So that opened the door. That opened the door for all you guys to be sitting here today because now you can charge more, but you have an opportunity. Because this business has been so poorly run by other people, you have an opportunity to step in there and say, I'm going to give you the results, I'm going to give you the accountability, I'm going to give you the motivation, and I'm going to tell you what it's worth. I'm going to tell you what it costs. So the thing to remember here is that to be successful in business, it's no longer enough to be a great trainer. To be successful in business, you have to become a great entrepreneur. This is one that you might want to write down with your soul searching. If all I want to be is a great trainer, then you should probably work for someone else. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. If I didn't want to own my own business, I'd be applying at the next Todd Durkin internship, you know? I mean, because there's value in just being a trainer for somebody, but that might be part of the problem, right? We just want to be the great trainer, but we don't want to create any systems, and then what happens? We're here worried about whether our business is still being run the way that we would like it to be run. 
So let's think about mature companies, like, you know, people that have built empires. Disney, FedEx, McDonald's, places like that. What do they have in common? Go ahead, raise your hand, go ahead. Anybody, what do they got in common? Systems, systems, there it is, there it is. One answer. Now, nobody goes into McDonald's and says, hey, is Ray Kroc here? Oh, Ray's not here? Okay, I'm out of here, right? But does that happen in your place? Does it happen in your place, Diane? Does it happen if Diane's not there? That they don't want to train with anybody but Diane? The answer is probably an operations manual and people coming aboard learning your system so well that they're a monkey too, right? Slash monkeys, right? How do I become a monkey? Well, first the monkeys took time to write it down. Then they taught somebody else how to be a monkey. All right, so here's the questions that we gotta ask ourselves. How can I get my business to run without my constant interference? How can I get my business to work without me? How can I systematize my business in such a way that like McDonald's, the 5,000th location runs just the same as the first? And here's one for you. Here's a real challenge for you. Think about this one. How can I create my business so I can spend time doing the work I love to do instead of the work I have to do? Are there any sessions right now that you'd like to give up and give to someone else? You know? Or is there, would you like to be able to be sick or take a vacation without worrying about your business falling apart? That's all about systems. So let's talk about systems a little bit more. We're all understanding that franchises, operations manuals, that's where it's at. Let's look at the difference in success. 75% success rate in franchises, 80% failure rate in independent businesses. That's major. So what's the secret? The secret's the prototype. The secret is that the people come in and run the systems, and the systems run the business. Here's one for you, and it's an acronym. All right, you're gonna wanna remember this after today. System stands for save yourself time, energy, and money. Bottom line is this. Some of you may be thinking, well, I don't wanna have 5,000 McDonald's locations. Chris, do you wanna have 5,000 locations? Okay, you might not wanna have 5,000 locations, but the first one better be such a great prototype, better have so many systems built in that there could be 5,000 just like it if you wanna have success in just one. So what are some of the questions that a place like McDonald's, a guy like Ray Kroc, had to ask himself when he said, well, now I gotta start writing down every detail because I do wanna have 5,000 locations and I do wanna be successful. Ray Kroc knew that it was all in the details. He knew no french fry could be left in the bin for longer than seven minutes or they become soggy. He knew that no burger could be left on the warming tray for longer than 15 minutes in order for it to maintain its proper moisture. He knew the frozen meat patties all had to be the same size and weight. Pickles were placed by hand in the same spot to keep them from sliding off onto the customer's lap. Food served in 90 seconds or less, because we've all agreed, right? That's what we came to buy. It wasn't the best burger. And cleanliness, Todd talked about this earlier. Cleanliness enforced to the most seamless, seemingly trivial detail. Okay, none of us are ready to start a burger stand, so what are our questions? Here they are. Here they are, start thinking about them. Start thinking about them. What is your mission? What is your why? Simon Sinek, what is your why? What do you stand for? What are your core values? Who is your customer? How big is your facility? What equipment do you have? How will that equipment be used? How will people be hired? Todd talks a lot about hiring systems. You guys would be smart to adopt maybe his hiring systems. What system do you have for your marketing or systems? How will your phone be answered? Do you have a phone script? What does your place smell like? What does your team dress like? What color are your walls? How will you have your place stay clean? And here's one for you. What scripted response do you have for the customer that calls up and only wants to price? Anybody ever have those phone calls? Yeah, 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 just tell me how much it is. How much is it? 
How much is it? How much is it at your place for if I call up and I want some personal training two times a week? Okay, he's got a few different options, but all I want is a price. What, let's say I, I push, 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 and you finally have to give me a price. What do you say? Right, okay, so you know, maybe we don't have the best answer, but there is an answer. There is an answer, and if you deem it to be the best answer, then you better teach your team that answer. At Journey Fitness, three times a week, group personal training, it's $177 a month, but I'm not going to tell you that. Actually, there's three different group personal training sessions. There's two different nutritional counseling sessions. That's five per week. That's 20 per month. When I divide 20 into 177, well, our most popular form of training is as low as $8 a session. Would you like to come in and check us out? I'm building value still. You know, build value. And that's a system. That's a scripted response. So it's a constant process. It's a constant process of deciding what works. That's innovation. We decided that we had an answer for the customer that just wants the, the price. We created something. And then we measured it. Every time we said that on the phone, they didn't just hang up and say, OK, I'm going to call Planet Fitness now. They said, oh, $8 a session. Why don't I come in? So that's called quantification. And then we orchestrated it. We said, everybody, if you get this question and if you get this pushy customer, this is what you have to say. That was orchestration. OK? Here's another example of orchestration. Um, anybody want to tell me how they answer the phone at their place? Anybody? Come on, there you go. John. OK, that's good, right? He announces the place. He announces who he is. I'm, he sounds enthusiastic. What if John added to that, and who am I speaking with? If he added to that, he automatically gets the customer's name. OK, and now you're excited, right? Because they heard about this place that you're excited about. You're proud of it. So how about the next step? How did you hear about us? Now we've got a referral source. Does it make sense where we're spending our money? OK, because we start learning that. And then we offer that free fitness consultation. So we need to send them a confirmation. And so we ask them for their email so that we can send them that confirmation of their appointment. And then how about a phone call in case I have any problem with the email? So what did I just do? In a single phone script that I can now orchestrate for everybody to use, I collected a lot of valuable information. I got name, I got email, I got you know, phone number. I got all kinds of things going on in that phone script. That phone script is free. That's yours. It's in your manual. You guys might want to use it. There's even a, a $10,000 question in there, a $100,000 question in there, depending on how many times you ask it. And that is, is there anybody that you'd like to bring with you? How about that? People like to train in groups nowadays. Why not ask them to bring somebody with them? If they say one out of 10 times, if they say you know, 10 times out of 100, yes, you're asking a good question. So here's a point on orchestration. Some of you are thinking right now, oh, man, if I give people scripts, I don't want to treat my people like robots, right? I don't want them to be robots. It's not a robotic process. Anybody that comes to work at your place should be experiencing the thrill of apprenticeship. I like what Greg has done in his business so well that I want to learn to be like Greg. I want to learn his systems. So you're just telling the system, this is how we answer the phone. This is how we train people. This is how we freeze our towels and hand them out at the end, whatever the case may be. So it's the thrill of apprenticeship. And when a person is on the team long enough that they can add value, it's OK if they say, hey, guys, I don't think that we're doing it the best way. Here's another way. If they say that, you should welcome it. But here's another point. Here's another point. Think about this for a second. If that person that decides that they disagree with the way things are being done does not gain the popular vote, if that person does not gain the deciding vote, if they don't change the system, then they still have to support how the team does it. You got to watch out for these people that decide that they want to still have the discretion to do it their way because they think their way is better. Here's one for you. Here's a quote, a uh, Michael Gerber quote, I believe. Discretion is the enemy of orchestration. Discretion is the enemy of orchestration, OK? Each, each person having their own way to do it, you'll never have a systemized business. So here's the take home. The take home is this. It's never over. 
The business development process is all about going places like this, this mentorship, perform better idea, learning what the next big thing is, you know, getting a feel, getting the pulse of your customers, creating, that's the innovation, quantifying, seeing if they like it, and then orchestrating things so that they're still getting more and more things. Our mentor, Todd Durkin, he taught me this. He said, who we are is a gift. And you know, like I had this funny way of thinking about things and it really resonated with me one day when he said it on the phone, he says, that's a gift that you like to think about systems so much. Well, I say that because you're all here, you all have a gift, you're action takers. And Todd has a word, a word of the week, a word of the year, but I'd like to challenge you. I'd like to challenge you for your word to be, be phenomenal. Don't just go out there and have a hamburger stand. Build something that could be a hamburger empire. Build something like that, like McDonald's. I want to play you a quick little snippet right here. I got a simple, simple, simple question for you. Here's the question. Do you believe that one day you're not going to live in a world that was given to you? That's right. But you are going to actually live in the world that you dream of. You got to make every single second count. You got to go in the future and see it, baby, and you got to come back in the present. And you got to take that big goal, that big dream, that big reality. That's what I said. You got to take that big reality, and we got to take small steps and make it manageable to making your dreams become a reality. Think big, dream big, but start small. That's right, start small. Remember what I told you, start where you are with what you have, because what you have is plenty. But the biggest enemy you have to deal with is yourself. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. You don't have to personally be perfect. Are you hearing me? There are those of you right now, you should have cut a CD, you should have wrote a book, you should have got in school and got that degree, you should have started your own business. There's so many things you should have done, you should have done, but you didn't do it because you're scared. You believe that, that you said scared of what? E, I ain't scared, you are scared. You are scared, you're scared of failure. You're scared to make a mistake. You're scared that you're not perfect. And I'm telling you today, you ain't gotta be perfect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't have to be perfect to get what you want, to do what you want, to have what you want, to be what you want. You don't have to be perfect, it's a lie. There it is, guys. I'll tell you, I'll never forget the day. It was uh, November 23rd, two days after Thanksgiving. My house in the last year had been flooded to the second floor. We didn't have insurance, so we were fixing our house paycheck to paycheck. And on November 23rd, I was fired. I was the chief operations officer for four fitness centers. I had become more of the face of the business than the owner had, and uh, that wasn't something that he wanted anymore. And I was fired at the worst time. I was fired at the holidays. I live in a suburban area. There wasn't like a ton of fitness centers to go knock on the door, so I had to make a decision. I had to decide, should I just go do something besides fitness? And I thought about that for about 10 seconds because I knew if I did anything besides fitness, it was gonna be like spiritual suicide. So I made a decision to go all in. I made a decision, I got a landlord that would charge me rent after I moved in. I got a newspaper that would give me 30 days to pay for the ads that I had going on based on a little credit check. I had a high risk uh, company that charged a high interest rate that gave me the financing that I needed to buy my equipment. So I moved into 1,500 square feet and started doing my thing with 14 clients. And I'm proud to tell you guys that 350 clients later, and starting a second location, I'm proud to say that I made the right decision. You don't have to be perfect. You don't need to wait for the perfect circumstances to go out there and get what you want. 
Guys, I hope that this weekend and I hope that this presentation helps you to go out there and get what you want. You can have what you want. Thank you very much.